Hi, I'm Miss Patty from Young Arts. We're going to do art today. I hope you can join us. If you don't have the supplies, you can ask the ch your child life specialist to, to maybe get you the supplies if they're readily available. This is what you're going to need for our art project today. You're going to need watercolor paints. You're going to need a Sharpie. You're going to need a pencil to draw your artwork with an eraser. You're going to need a paper towel and a glass of water. So we're going to start by reading the book, The Grouchy Ladybug by Eric Carle. We're going to talk about Eric Carle's artwork and we're going to talk about ladybugs. Then you are going to have a chance to draw your very own ladybug with me. It doesn't have to look like this, boys and girls. It can be your very own artwork. You can make it just however you want it. But I'm going to show you how to go about do it, doing it and give you some helpful hints about traits of a ladybug. So let's get started. The Grouchy Ladybug by Eric Carl. Eric Carl is one of my favorite children's authors because he is so creative. He does all his artwork with finger paints and then he cuts up the pieces after it dries and makes his animals. So let's begin. Aphids are small insects. They suck the juice from leaves and then the leaves die. Ladybugs eat aphids. That's good for trees, shrubs, and other plants that have leaves. To the ladybugs, I dedicate this book. Three cheers to them. The Grouchy Ladybug by Eric Carle. It was night and some fireflies danced around the moon. At five o'clock in the morning, the sun came up. A friendly ladybug flew in from the left. It saw a leaf with many aphids on it and decided to have them for breakfast. But just then, a grouchy ladybug flew in from the right. It too saw aphids and wanted them for breakfast. Good morning. Go away. Good morning, said the friendly ladybug. Go away, shouted the grouchy ladybug. I want those aphids. We can share them, suggested the friendly ladybug. Nope, they're mine, all mine, screamed the grouchy ladybug. Or do you want to fight me for them? If you insist, answered the friendly ladybug sweetly. It looked the other bug straight in the eye. The grouchy ladybug stepped back. It looked less sure of itself. Ah, you're not big enough for me to fight, it said. Then why don't you pick on somebody bigger? Then I'll do that. I'll do that, screeched the grouchy ladybug. I'll show you. It puffed itself up and it flew off. At six o'clock, it met a yellow jacket. That's a bee, a very mad bee. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the yellow jacket, showing its stinger. Ah, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At seven o'clock, it saw a stag beetle. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the stag beetle, opening its jaw. Ah, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At eight o'clock, he came across his praying mantis. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the praying mantis, reaching out with its long front legs. Ah, uh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and it flew off again. At nine o'clock, it almost flew into a sparrow. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the sparrow, opening its sharp beak. Ah, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, 
and flew off again. At 10 o'clock, it saw a lobster. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the lobster, stretching its claws. Ah, uh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At 11 o'clock, it bumped into a skunk. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the skunk, starting to lift its tail. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At 12 noon, it spotted a boa constrictor. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the snake. Right after lunch. Look what lunch is. Oh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At one o'clock, it happened upon a hyena. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? <laughs> if you insist, said the hyena, laughing eerily and showing its teeth. Ah, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At two o'clock, it met a gorilla. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Look where the ladybug is, everybody. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the gorilla, beating its chest. Well, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At three o'clock, it ran into a rhinoceros. Hey, you, look where the ladybug is. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the rhinoceros, lowering its horn. Um, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. Here's the ladybug. At four o'clock, it encountered an elephant. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? If you insist, said the elephant, raising its trunk and showing its big tusks. Ah, uh, you're not big enough, said the grouchy ladybug, and flew off. At five o'clock, it met a whale in the ocean. Hey, you, said the grouchy ladybug. Want to fight? But the whale didn't answer. You're not big enough for me anyway, said the grouchy ladybug and flew off. At 5.15, the grouchy ladybug said to one of the whale's flippers, here's the flipper, hey, you, want to fight? But it got no answer, so it flew off. At 5.30, the grouchy ladybug said to the whale's fin, hey, you, want to fight? but it got no answer, so it flew off. At a quarter to six, the grouchy ladybug said to the whale's tail, hey, you, want to fight? And the whale's tail gave the grouchy ladybug such a slap that it flew across the sea and across the land. At six o'clock, the grouchy ladybug arrived right back where it started from. Ah, here you are again, said the friendly ladybug. You must be very hungry. There are still some aphids left. You can have them for dinner. Oh, <laughs> thank you, said the wet, tired, and hungry ladybug. Thank you. You're welcome. Soon, all the aphids were gone. Thank you, said the leaf. You are welcome, answered both ladybugs, and they went to sleep. The fireflies, who had been sleeping all day, came out to dance around the moon. The end. We're going to be drawing ladybugs today. Now, I'm going to be drawing this ladybug, nice and big. 
Notice that a ladybug is always symmetrical. Symmetrical is a word that means the same on both sides. So when you're drawing your ladybug, remember, if you put a dot on one side, you have to put a dot on the other. You can make your ladybug big like this, or you can make your ladybug small like this with a flower around it. That's gonna be up to you. Remember, it's always symmetrical. We'll draw this one, but if you wanna make your ladybug smaller and add a leaf or a flower, that's up to you. Let's get started. Now, I've already penciled it in, but I want you to draw with your pencil. I'm going to be doing it with a Sharpie. You're gonna draw with your pencil what I'm drawing right now. Remember, if it doesn't look like you want it to look, we have erasers. That's why they invented erasers. If you want to make a change, erase what you don't like, and change it before you do Sharpie to go over it. So let's get started. We're gonna do it together. I'm gonna to do it with Sharpie, but you're gonna do it with pencil. And if I'm going too fast, I'm going to upload this on YouTube in a couple of days, and you could come back and look at it under Young Arts. You come back and look at this lesson. All my lessons will be uploaded to YouTube if you did not go fast enough, if you miss something, if you want to see it again, or you want to share it with your friends, it's going to be there. And I believe the hospital will also be repeating this video throughout the week. So let's get started. Okay, with pencil, with pencil so you can erase, I want you to make a big circle. Now, if you want to make a smaller you want to make a smaller ladybug, just make the circle smaller. We're going to make a circle. Ladybugs have two wings, so we're going to make a line down the middle. And then we're going to do a little triangle, which we're going to color in black. We can do that later. We're going to do, I'm going to let you catch up by your pencil. And after the pencil and you have your artwork just how you want it, you're going to trace over all the pencil lines with a Sharpie. Okay. Now you might ask, why can't I just trace over with markers? Well, you could, but markers will bleed. It will just run everywhere if you use watercolors. Sharpies are permanent, so they will not get hurt by any of the watercolor. But if you're going to be using markers, you have to do the whole thing in markers. And I'm going to show you a little trick how to make your markers look like watercolors after we get done. Okay, after you do your circle... We need the head of our head of our ladybug right here. Just a little half circle right here. Okay. And the antennae. Antenna is one, antenna is two. Just like cactus is one, cacti is two. Why they do that, I don't know, but that's the way it is. And we're going to do our circles. And remember, if you do a circle on one side, you have to do a dot on the other side, a circle on the other side. If you do one on this side, you can do one on this side. It doesn't matter. But ladybugs don't have a lot of dots. They just have, and one of my students told me that it means how old they are. You're gonna to have to tell me if that's true or not but I think the dots mean how old they are. So it's symmetrical. We have dots, 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 dots. Okay. Do you have all that done so far? Let's just review. Do you have the antennae? Do you have the dots? Do you have the little triangle at the bottom? Now you can add feet if you want or no feet. That is up to you. And there are three 
feet on each side. I'm going to add my feet. Cute little feet. Okay. Now we're going to do the leaves. You can make a giant leaf if you want, and I will show you how to do that. This is what a leaf looks like. It kind of looks like a football, but a little pointier than a football. And then we can do a line down the middle. And that's what a leaf looks like. Or you can do giant leaves like that. Now, don't get frustrated. If, if your artwork isn't coming out exactly like you want it, it will look gorgeous when you paint it. Or you can just erase and fix some of the things. Does your circle have to be perfect? No. Do these circles have to be perfect? Absolutely not. Artists don't use rulers usually, and they don't use anything to make sure it's perfection. They want it to look like art, not like a computer made it. And I'm gonna go ahead and make some more leaves over here. And maybe I'll make another leaf here. And this is what a leaf looks like. It kind of looks like a football, but pointed at the ends. And I'll make a little. And it's got lines on it. The leaf looks like that. Okay. Now, when you get done with pencil, you're going to do the whole thing in Sharpie. This is an art vocabulary word. You're going to trace over all your pencil lines to make sure that it looks just the way you want it to look. I'm going to give you an opportunity to use your Sharpie right now. And when you get done using your Sharpie, erase your pencil lines so it doesn't even look like you did pencil. Everybody keep on working, trace over all your lines, make sure it looks just the way you want it. It does not have to look like my artwork. I want you to make this your own artwork, but it does have to be circle. It does have to be symmetrical with a line down the middle and two and 10 eye, and you can put the legs in or leave the legs out. That's up to you. Okay, I'm going to fill in all my circles like this. Be sure to do this with your Sharpie. And while you're doing this, I just want to remind everybody that after you do your artwork, I would love to see how you how it came out. I would love to hear if you like this lesson, if you think it's too easy, if you think it's too hard. You let me know. And this is my email address, and it's just for you people here um, to email me, let me know how I'm doing. I'd love to see pictures of your beautiful artwork. Don't forget to include your first name so that I know who did it. And it's Miss Patty Young Arts at gmail.com. And I'm just going to leave that right here so everybody knows where to send your artwork. And we are going to have other art lessons going on throughout throughout the weeks because I know that everybody wants to do artwork when they're sitting and not doing anything and maybe bored of watching TV. So here's your opportunity. Okay. Now, one last thing. The dots are black. The head is black. Don't forget to color in the head. There we go. Okay, do you have everything colored in? Do you like the way it looks? If you don't, you can add some details to help your artwork look like a masterpiece. Okay, I think we're ready for painting. 
Now this is the final project that we're gonna go for. Red paint, and remember we're using Sharpies, they're permanent, so you can go right over the Sharpie and it will not bother it. Let's review using these watercolor paints. You might remember these watercolor paints from school. These watercolor paints can blend with each other. Yellow can go with red to make orange. Blue can go with yellow to make green. All these can mix together. But the most important thing is you have to make sure your watercolor has water in it. These do not work without a lot of water in it. And you'll see I'm going ahead and putting a little bit of water ahead of time so that they get nice and soft. That's the way they work best. This is a major art tip. Be sure to try out your paints before you put them on your artwork so you don't ruin your artwork. Let's try this out. I want orange. It had a little bit of yellow in it and I don't want yellow. So I try my colors out ahead of time. There's two different blues. See how I'm cleaning the brush in between colors? I wanna see what these two colors look like. That's blue, light blue. Let's see what dark blue looks like. A little bit darker. Okay, wash off your brush. Decide, I would probably start with red. But for those of you that are using markers, I wanna show you something. These markers are great if you don't have watercolors, and I'm gonna show you how it works. If you're using these markers, you're going to use the side of the, of the uh, marker so that it's nice and thick. And I'm, do you see how I'm doing lines, everybody? I'm doing lines and I can go right over the Sharpie because our Sharpies are permanent. These are not permanent. These are not permanent. So I'm going over these like this and I'm doing it in lines. Watch what happens. I just wanna show you before I finish. Watch what happens when I put a little bit of plain water on these. it turns into watercolor. Do you see that? So you can use these as watercolor too. And doesn't that look pretty? I put the water right on it. And I go like that. So now I've taught you how to use these as watercolors. I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the leaf. Let's try green. You know what? I'm going to teach you something that I teach my sixth and seventh graders. I'm going to teach you how to, to mix these two colors. This is something that the older kids do in school. See how I'm doing long lines on the side of the marker? Now, I think I might want to mix a little bit because leaves aren't always one color. Sometimes leaves are two or three colors, like our friend Eric Carl did, who did the Grouchy Ladybug. I'm going to put some yellow in there. You see how I mixed some yellow in there in some of the areas? I left a few areas white and I mixed some Let's see what it looks like when I put water on top of it. Make sure you wash your brush out. If you don't wash your brush out, you're gonna have an icky color and you wipe your brush on the paper towel to make sure it's totally clean. And if your water gets too awful, you're gonna to have to get some new water. Okay, look boys and girls, I am doing this and I have some extra on my, look, I have some extra on my brush and I can just go like this. That's called an experiment. I tried it out and it works really nice. 
and then you can add and I've now made watercolors out of our markers. Okay. So I want you to do your own artwork, finish it up. I'm gonna give you time to finish it up. Um, give me a couple of days and I'm gonna upload it on YouTube for Young Arts with Miss Patty. You can email me your picture to show me how it came out. And the next time we get together, I'll show your artwork to everyone. Wouldn't that be fun? So Miss Patty Young Arts at gmail.com. Let me show you one thing before I, I leave. Ah, my son's not staying up. This is what the other project looked like. If you want to do a flower with a little ladybug, that's great too. I hope you learned a lot. And I look forward to seeing you next time.